right? Because I said I'd show how I set this up. So we got our our bobber, our indicator rather, quick release down. Now everybody knows the difference between a bobber and an indicator. Four dollars. Yeah, four ninety nine. <laughs> I sell indicators. So people always ask, which way do you put the peg? Okay. I always like to put the peg, the black peg on the fly side of the indicator, regardless of indicator style. I find, I believe it fouls less because I don't know if this will show, but as this rolls out, it's going to roll away from the peg. So if you're tailing your loop a little bit, if this is going the other way, there's a chance you could catch the black peg and whip around. What's the danger to having the black peg on the fly side? When you break it off. Yes. You lose the pain. Yeah, and I, my wife's happy, my kids are happy, but you're not. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a sadist. Well, I am, but um, <laughs> I'll show you. The other thing, too, is you lose the black peg, and then the indicator part slides off, too, and you have to pick up and you know go get your indicator, or if it's really windy, you wave goodbye and move <laughs> on, right? Well, if you, and I'll use a, a swivel as a stopper. So that I, I think I brought all three bags here. There they are. Come on, get them out of the I'm going to use black. Well, yeah, you could, but I like... So these are the swivels here. Okay? 16s, 12s, and 14s. Okay? Those are the three sizes. 12s are the biggest. And then 14s are the next size down, and 12, the 16s are the tiny ones, just like hooks. So let's take a 14 because it's stand out. A lot of times, frankly, your old hook boxes are great places to store your swivels, dump them in there, or a film caster, and you're off and, you're off and rocking. <laughs> so to attach the swivel, you know, so the indicator is between the swivel and the fly line, is just use a clinch knot or an improved clinch knot. And again, don't, don't be. <coughs> so again, we'll just go around. Sorry, where is the swivel placed? It's been placed between, the, it's at the end of the tippet. I'll show you in two sets. So I'm just doing this one. This is getting a little closer to the business end. I'll do an improved clinch on this one. Pull it tight. Trim. All right, so swivel. So there's swivel, indicator, and then butt section, and then fly line. So throw that all on that side. So throw all that down. And you can see if you have a break off, what happens? You're saving everything. You're saving everything. Because the break off is going to occur on this side of the swivel, you hope. You know, if everything. You know, there are those freak break-offs if you nick it or something stressed up here, but in most situations, it's going to break off here or at the fly line a little bit further down the road. So let's, uh, let's put on uh, some tippet, because then we can flow right into the dropper section. What have I done? Did I throw it? I did. So I need to hear my little leader gilly. So did you notice that swivel on there? Were you cast? No. Nope. Not really. Not when you had a bloody big indicator. <laughs> <laughs> now somebody said, oh, that's swivel. That's not fly fishing. I figure when you chuck an indicator on, yeah, I think you already played that not fly fishing card. <laughs> so, just my opinion. Okay, so there's my, and, and because, you know, I might, depending on if I'm going to start, you know, I'll put two to three feet on. We'll, we'll do that here. And again, just on the other side. We'll set that up. In you go. And around. The 3x tippet with the 3x leader intentional or just by for illustration? Uh, no, I'll do that. I'll do the same or, or lesser. Because the, the, this, the indicator and the swivel, everything kind of flops over. Okay, this is not a, with your indicator fishing, you know, with that long 18, 20 foot, I'm going for as much distance as I can comfortably carry. Get it going once, twice, shoot on the third, off she goes, everything rolls over. Because I'm fishing, I'm using the fly line as an indicator, or I'm 
the worst case scenario, I'm going to field the grab. With indicator fishing, I'm a firm believer and you keep this sucker close. And that's why I like to use that indicator line because what, if you remember from yesterday, that indicator line, when you're indicator fishing, I don't know if I did say that, one of the benefits of it besides the, 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 uh, the way the head is made to flip over weight, it's, it's a larger head, shorter front taper. The longer the front taper where the fly line comes up in the weight forward section and tapers down to the very tip of the line, the longer that tip, and it may be like 6, 8, 12 inches depending on the manufacturer, the more gentle that turnover is going to be. Nice dry fly presentation. The indicator line shortens that because you're not trying to turn over a dry. You're trying to flop over all of this, and some split shot maybe, and a couple of weighted flies. So you're not trying to get that delicate layout of a dry. You're trying to roll over some weight. And to move weight, you need weight, right? Just ask football linebackers, right? You'll never see little skinny five foot two inch linebackers. <laughs> They're not going to be able to move running backs. They're just going to be doormats. <laughs> Place cleats in chest and keep running. So. Question. Yeah. Why don't you put the indicator right at the end of your fly line? Why? Why between the butt set section? Because this moves up and down. Because to set this indicator. Oh, because you can adjust it. Yeah. It sets like this, and those are probably haven't. Most people have seen this, but you again put the leader on the assembled position, pull the peg off, set it where you're going to set it, and I'm actually pinching the back side. And because the the leader can't move, it has to buckle and form a loop. And then you pinch a little bit, of, and you got a little bit of touch once you figure it out. And the beauty of this indicator, it's floating, down she goes, you set, disengages, slides free. The indicator does not become a barrier landing the fish because it's stuck in place. And if you're not using it to swivel, you get an extra run out of the fish as that bangs them in the nose. So, <laughs> so we got that set up. And I like long, big loops. I think they disengage a little easier. But. Is that easy to get the fly through when you're making the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's not good on a tight loop, mate. No, I like it bigger. I like, you know, I recommend these larger loops. Okay, so that's all set in place. We're down to our swivel. So let's put some, let's put a fly on. So I'll show you how I like to put a fly on, and I've got a box of hooks here. Let's see. Well, it's a big fly. It's a number six. Okay. But before I put that on, I'll do it with a little bit of rope. And this is the non-slip loop knot, okay? And I've got in my little baggie here a nice, small, delicately dressed chronomer. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> Complete nice with UV chromium. gills. That's a nice chromium. So to do the non-slip loop knot, or the Rapala knot, is overhand loop couple inches or so above the end of the tippet, okay? Fly goes on, I don't care up or down, I just jam it on. My hands are usually cold, it's windy, fish, don't care. Now I pull this up, up to the, um, the loop, and what I do when it's mono, and I'll show it when I tie it live, I'll actually pull on, you know, just pull on everything, so this overhand loop is about twice the diameter of the hook eye. Okay, so this tag end, I'm doing this open so you can see what I'm doing, because a lot of times it's in, all in, in my hands. I pull that through, right? So there's our overhand loop that we first tied, the fly goes on, and then after, with each step now, the, fly, the tag end always goes through the loop. Okay, so I'm going to pull on this, it's about twice the diameter, and then I typically come up and I grab both the fly and the loop and hold them in my forefinger to keep them from slipping together and drawing tight. And now it's like a clinch knot. Well, right? So take the tag end and we'll go around a couple, three times. Not too much because the string's a little. And then, like I said, you've done a step, back through the loop and pull tight. And that's one way of tying this. And there you go. The knot, I don't know if you can quite see that, but this fly. The knot is not tied up against the fly, and it's got freedom of movement, like a little mono or floral swivel, okay? That's how I tie it. If you ever watch Brian, for example, ties it, he does it a little different. And they, all, they both work, and on the chronomet DVD we're working on, we show both methods. Brian does it the same way, overhand loop, through the eye, okay? Does not go back through. Goes back up. 
goes around the main line, I think this is how he does it, and then back through and pulls tight. And that's how he does it in the hunts. Which way is better? On matter. I would experiment with both, and for every knot, that one works better for me, that one works better for you. And that's what I do. Have you heard of the Bimini, or not the Bimini? It's a Bimini twist, twist. yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the trilene knot, you mean? Yeah, it yeah. goes through the eye twice. Yeah, that's like, it's like a clinch knot that goes through yes. twice. But it stays, op it, it jams shut. The purpose of this knot is when the knot comes tight, it does not go tight against the hook eye. It's open. So the fly can swing and move. Right. All I'm saying is, couldn't you do a double loop like that through the eye? For, uh, I don't think so. I don't, as I think about it now, it's... Uh, you could. You could, I guess, but... Um, this, this knot was shown to me by Lefty Cray, and it's designed for salt water. So I figured if that knot can hold a tarpon, it can hold a trout, and I'm, I'm sold. And it was easy, and it made sense in my tiny mind that it would work. So that's 100%? Yeah, it's stronger than a clinch or an improved clinch. Yeah, 97% actually. How much of a loop? Uh, it doesn't matter. To be honest, when, when you first tie it, and I have good days and I have bad days, some days I have fish flies with a half inch loop, <laughs> and they were, you know, I just had it, I'm done. Um, but again, the goal is, so I'm just going to tie this live now. So I tie this on. I can hardly see. And then put that through the eye of the hook. We've got a big hook here. We'll probably end up, there'll be some blood probably in a minute. And then through. And then I pull at this point, and I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'm going to trust that you can. I'm just pulling on everything. And I'm just going to, again, I'm opening things up. But my goal is, does that show up more or less? Well, believe me, that right here, this little overhand loop is about twice the diameter of this hook eye. And then around that, four times is ample. I always go four times. Does that vary depending on the tippets? No, I usually do four. It seems to, you know, uh, somebody, uh, somebody did not test on this, and four versus six times, it didn't make a hill of beans difference. So four is less than six, I'm in. And then just pull tight, and again, a little saliva, which I didn't do. And there you go, you can see that's, you know, a little bigger. It's about, well, this is a number two hook, I think, in a number, that's a six, it's a big six. I think that's a two in a six box. Uh, but you can see that, and again, it doesn't, you know, everybody gets a little worried about how big the loop is. If the fish can see the loop, he can see that you don't have the exact number of ribs, and he can really see this thing. <laughs> you know, so all bets are off, okay? But you can see how that's, a great action. So there's one fly on there. So let's talk about droppers for a bit, real quick. So the simplest way to do a dropper, is I want to tie a second fly on, is take a length of tippet, and if I'm fishing under an indicator, it's less. If I'm fishing without indicator, under the water, three to five feet apart, depending on water clarity. The clearer the water, the further apart. So I'm just going to form a clinch knot here, or an improved clinch knot, without the fly, quickly. So it's formed, right? It's all there. Then I put that through the loop. Carefully lick so you don't hook yourself. And tie on your fly and cut the right end. Right? You can for slippage if you want a little bit. I did there because those nippers are dull. But it's not about, I don't mind leaving a little bit of a tag. Just in case that knot slips, it's a little bit of insurance. Again, I don't think it matters. And then, of course, we would just tie on oops, our second fly. So again, overhand loop. Through the eye. I'm just, again, I usually do this all sort of hold the hook in hand, but you need to see what I'm doing. So now we'll hold everything together around four times. And then back through. I'm, not, I'm afraid of hooking myself because you know when you're doing demos, everything that can will go wrong. It'd be really embarrassing to be whisked to emergency. How'd you get the hook in your mouth? <laughs> But when I simulate takes, I simulate takes. So that is a tandem setup. 
Okay? They trail one behind to tother. <coughs> Advantage tends, it's so probably the least tangle prone method. Okay? Drawback, I want to change this fly. Got to start disassembling. Okay? But we'll do that. So let's disassemble that. So the other way is to tie. Ouch. All right, so you could just tie on. Let's tie this. Okay. Let's just do. I'm going to tie this with the hook on, so I won't do this. But you just do your triple surgeon's knot. Flirting with danger here, I know it. So we'll pretend right now that the, the fly I've got tied on, because just for speed purposes, I'm going to pull through. And I have done this on occasion on the water. I get lazy and just something says, give it a shot. What could go wrong? <laughs> so through. Yes. Or just one nasty tangle. But if you keep your loop wide open like I'm doing here, you can pull everything through. Okay? And again, this is where that grabbing, you know, if you just, you could just pull this knot tight, but we want to tie off a tag end here. We're going to have a short tag. So if I grab the fly line side of this knot and pull tight, it'll draw to where I'm grabbing and will help keep my dropper long. Okay? Because the tag end you want to tie off of on this system, when this came off, there's two tags. The long one on the fly side, can you see that? That's from actually this tippet here I'm wiggling in my hand. All right? This short one is actually from the tippet side of this knot, the fly side. Because you want that because you're going to tie on the one that came off the fly line side of the leader or tippet. Because when something grabs this and pulls, it's going to pull on the knot and help tighten it. If it was to tie on here, it's going to work against the knot and it could cause you some tears. Okay? And then again, we would just tie our fly on here. Okay? And then you'd have a um, standard dropper setup. Okay? Now the drawback, the advantage to this system is I like the flies being away from the leader. I just like the action it gives. I just think it's better that there's no, there is nothing on the end of it. And obviously you can easily change flies anytime you want. The drawback to this system is you'll consume this and then you've got to, in theory, um, you know, redo your tippet again. So let's pretend I've made some changes or this dropper is too short. I want to keep my droppers about six to eight inches long. They tend to tangle less at this point. So you can now we'll do the, the sliding dropper. And I'm going to do this out of backing just because it's a totally different color. So this is not to length, but so I've taken that, I've just trimmed off, pretend this is this right now. The 3X is actually this. So I'm going to tie a perfection loop in one end. So to do a perfection loop, I come under the main line. Again, give yourself lots to work with, and I formed a loop. I'm pinching the where the line crossed, and this. This tag end went under the main line here. So this tag end is underneath, and I'm pinching that junction. Okay? And then I come around and make another loop completely around. So I put loop around loop, and I have two loops. That's the first loop. And then I took this tag end and went right around and formed a second loop. And all I do, and I'm pinching everything here. This holds it all together. Don't let go here, or knot falls apart. And I'm just going to take this, tag in, and you bring it between the two loops and kind of pull down. Okay? So what I've got is that tag in went between the small loop and the big loop. And you reach through the big loop, grab the small loop. And pull. And you have a loop. It's the double perfection. The double, you double make perfection. double. You'd make two two main loops before going around. There's two loops on the double perfection. I don't use it. So you actually make four loops. Uh, you'll make three. Well, you make two and then, and then one, one and then one. You'll one make two between. loops. You kind of go like this, and I never actually really tied it, and then form a second loop, kind of like a pair of rabbit ears, and then you go around and pull through. 
I don't, I, I don't know why Vladdy, I'd I, I have to ask Jack, but the single one works just fine for this kid. Less comp, the KISS formula, right? <laughs> just because you can. If you want to make double loops, you can. But I, I like this works for me, and I can tie a, a perfection loop very easily that uh, I'm doing this way. And now what I'll do is I'll find that, that junction. Okay, and I tr the key here, that's my surgeon's knot. Can everybody see that? Okay. There's the fly side of it. So above, on the fly line side of the leader, I come underneath, go through, work the, the, the main part of the perfection loop, and now it's on. And this loop can slide up and down, but typically when you cast, it's going boing, it hits the stopper. And see how nice and straight that stands out too? And this, when it's got a fly on it, this will spin around the main line and tends to tangle less because this has a bit more freedom on it to do what it needs to do to stay away from the main line. 